was a dream catcher. It was my nightmare. I think I see what you're saying. If I can become awesome, so can Dylan. Is that what I'm saying? Who the hell knows what's going to happen? Let me tell you something about life. We all have this illusion that we're in control. I want to play pro football. Some guy takes my knee out. I graduate from school. I'm going to drive my motorcycle across country, and some suit pulls my draft number. I work my ass off to send my daughter to college. Some juggler knocks her up. Again, sir, I'm very sorry about that. I put in the years, I build my business so I don't have to answer anyone, and I still have to jump through hoops to get a damn sausage. You lost me there at that last part. Look, all I'm saying is things are always going to change, and you have to deal with it. But the good news is, five years from now, while you're playing with your grandkid, you won't even remember today. <laughs> you hadn't thought about it like that. Thanks, Jay. Hello. Hey, Javier. Manny's waiting for you outside. What? Why not? Hold that thought. His son's sitting on a curb waiting to go to Disneyland, and Superman can't drag himself away from a craps table. And I'm the jerk. Say, listen. I, uh... Sorry, but I got some bad news. What? Your dad couldn't make it. Why not? The plane was full, and this old lady needed to get home, so he gave up his seat. You're making that up, aren't you? No. He just didn't want to come. Are you kidding me? He was very upset. He was dying to see you. In fact, look what he sent. A limo? Yeah. He wanted me and your mom to take you to Disneyland. I told you he was an awesome dad. Yeah, he's a prince. <clears throat> I'm sorry if things got a little out of hand back there, but in our defense, look at you. I mean, smell you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fantastic apology. Oh, don't be too hard on the kid. I was egging him on. You're going to be mad, be mad at me. Done. I was just happy to see him laugh a little bit. You know, he's had kind of a tough week. I got sprayed by a skunk, and I'm wearing a dress that makes my hips look huge. I know he doesn't want me to talk about it, but he didn't get invited to this big party. Some kids he thought were his friends think he's weird. Now, you know me on this. I'm no, I'm no good at it. You know, I, I never know what to say. Well, that's true. But maybe I raised a kid who would know what to say. Well, that's the only reason I invited him along, you know, because this astronomy stuff, that's, that's our thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll talk to him. You know, you don't look that ridiculous. You, know, you, you actually got the legs for it. Dad. No, I'm just saying, if you were that type of a gay... Dad! You'd probably do all right for yourself. Come on. Ooh. Phil, this is for you. It's a... Little early birthday present, and I admit this one is a regift. World's best grandfather. Oh. It's the mug I gave you when Haley was born. You kept it all these years. Yeah, but uh, it's yours now. I don't need it anymore. I got a new title. Great grandma? Oh, hell, I grabbed the wrong one here. I'm going to count to three. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. uh, you handled that a lot better than I did back in the day. Oh, outside. On the inside, I'm you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey. Hey. Congratulations on the first of what I'm sure will be many diplomas. Unless you want to skip all that and move to Columbia and become a radiologist. Thanks for helping me with the cap and gown mess. I don't know what I would have done without you. I'm just happy you and your dad got to have some father-son time last night. Yeah. What? It's just, with me graduating and everything, kind of wanted to say, you and me today, you know, that's what I think of as father-son time. Let me tell you something. After my divorce, my rule for dating was no kids. And then you and your mom came along, and all that went right out the window. 
What I'm trying to say is, here's to you, son. You know, I'm still kind of hungover. You're a man now. Power through. You take your seat, Dad. We're about to start. Actually, I thought you and I would take a little walk. I remember it like it was yesterday, the day that Mitchell came home from the hospital in a very unfashionable white diaper with three strands of scraggly, raggedy Andy hair. If he's doing it, I'm doing it. You coming, Barb? You old sweet talker. Wait for me. We were inseparable. I was his big sister, his big brother, his nemesis, his protector, his best friend. 